Hello, Booktube. I went back to the Brattle Bookshop. <laughs> now, that's not exactly shocking news. Those of you who might be new to the channel, first of all, welcome. Uh, and second, uh, the Brattle Bookshop is a used bookstore here in Boston. It's fantastic. It's three stories on uh, of of just cram packed with used books, all at reasonable prices. And then there's a whole sale lot next door, just open to the elements of one dollar, three dollar, and five dollar carts of books, all different descriptions, no rhyme or reason. Sometimes you can tell uh, the nature of recent buys that the Brattle has been out on by the nature of what turns up in the sale lot. Sometimes you can't, but sometimes you can. Like, for instance, I, I noticed the last few trips uh, that the the sale lot nowadays, right now, has a huge number of oversized books. Picture books, DK, history books, that, that sort of thing. Commemorative Vanity Fair volumes, all kinds of things. The walls of the lot have bookcases built in, and those bookcases are, I don't know, 70% oversized books. And I, I confess, the, some of those might be of interest to me, but I confess it's been, I, I am, I am uh, what we say, how we say in South Boston, I am wicked pissa old. <laughs> and so even though it is not technically cold anymore in Boston, it's still too chilly for me to stand out there and pour over all of those things. I will. I will. The more, I'm like, I'm like a delicate little crocus poking itself up out of, out of the earth <laughs> in, in the early spring. As soon as the temperatures start to warm regularly, I will start to go back to the brattle regularly. Uh, when I went today, temperatures weren't all that bad today, and I once again got four books, and I wanted to show them to you. And I not only have the four books here, but I also have, I've done my due diligence, and I have my visual aids <laughs> ready for you. Like, for instance, the first book that I got was this lovely vintage paperback of Parade's End by Ford Maddox Ford. This is a, a, a big... Uh, typically collected volume of the little novellas that he wrote about uh, the British ruling class during World War I. Uh, the first one being, the reason that I, I have to look these up, even though I've read this book uh, probably six or seven times, is that the, the individual parts of the book are so badly titled that I never remember them. The first part is Some Do Not, dot dot dot, then No More Parades, then A Man Could Stand Up, God Help Us All, and then The Last Post. All horrible titles. Uh, but, uh, Parade's End isn't so bad as a, a title for the collected thing. And I really like this this vintage paperback. In fact, I like it so much. I've had this. In fact, I think I've hauled this exact edition on this channel before. Uh, I, I strongly recommend this volume to read. I strongly do. It is brilliant prose. Uh, it's it's always, Volumes are always festooned, like I'm sure this one will have. They're always festooned with uh, the literary greats of... Uh, Ford Maddox Ford's day, proclaiming that he is immortal as a writer. Uh, yeah, there are not many English novels which deserve to be called great. Parades End is one of them. Uh, that's Auden. And uh, Graham Greene said, there is no novelist of this century more likely to live than Ford Maddox Ford. Uh, none of that has really turned out to be true. I, I don't think a whole lot of people know Ford or read him outside of school. Uh, but this is tremendous. If you read it, you will really like it. It's not, uh, in terms of, uh, these were all, uh, these all came out in the 20s. And in terms of British war novels or British shadow of war novels, I myself prefer some other writers, uh, including, I mean, Ford Maddox Ford at least is taught in school. Olivia Manning is not taught anywhere. And that's just a shame. That's a horrible crime. Uh, but anyway, this was the first one. And my visual, my visual aid for it is this, the Penguin Classic Parade's End. Uh, just to show you that this, that there, you know, another edition, and I don't know, maybe you prefer the Penguin Classic. The vintage, if I remember correctly, has nothing at all. Yeah, it has nothing at all but the book. The first page of this vintage classic is the first page of the book. And the last page literally is the last page of the book. Uh, whereas the Penguin has all of the appurtenances. It has a long introduction. It has notes. Uh, and I like that. But sometimes, sometimes I like just having the book. I know. <laughs> I know. It's a sickness. But you have it too. So uh, Then this next one uh, is far more pertinent to this channel. <laughs> this is, I found the, all, the old Oxford classic uh, mass market paperback of Phineas Redux by Anthony Trollope, the the, uh, the second book that he wrote starring Phineas Finn, the kind of sequel to Phineas Finn uh, that he wrote years later. Uh, and the reason why I got this one, this one is introduced by F.S.L. Lyons, and it's edited by John Whale. 
And the reason I got this one is because I got rid of it when I got these. The, the folks at Oxford, at Oxford World Classics sent me the whole set of the Palliser novels, and they're gorgeous. These beautiful trade paperbacks are just gorgeous, beautifully designed. Uh, instead, of, they, they take a different approach than these old Oxfords. The old Oxford World Classics were patterned on the old Penguin Classics, where you see some uh, detail of some painting or piece of artwork on the cover, and it is supposed to connote somehow the contents of the book. Whereas these Oxfords have just high, high definition photographs of objects. In this case, a barrister's wig. Very important. If you think about the book, if you know Phineas Redo, you will you will know right away why that is important. Uh, and uh, this one is is uh, edited by John Bowen. And when when I got these Oxford trade paperbacks from Oxford, they they came in a set. They came in a box. I squealed probably for the whole day. <laughs> And when I got them, I thought, okay, well, you got these new editions from Oxford, and you're trying to get rid of books in your collection, so you must get rid of all of your old Oxford mass market, uh, your Oxford trollops. And so I did. I got, I had two shelves of Oxford trollops, and I got rid of them all, almost. I kept the Duke's children, and I kept the Prime Minister, but I got rid of most of them. Uh, I also kept the autobiography, because I, you know, I never see that, and I, uh, I don't, I don't know that Oxford has a new edition of the autobiography and it's in a, it's a remarkable book uh, and that was foolish <laughs> that was a foolish thing to do yes it's the same book it's the same story but the editorial stuff is important fascinating and completely different so so it as exorbitant as it is I know this is just gonna be an exorbitant Brattle Hall because there are duplicates left right and center but uh, as exorbitant as it is, I sometimes want those two things, I, especially since these I had I had uh, credit at the Brattle, so I wasn't I wasn't out of pocket for these things. Uh, so so I got the Oxford mass market of Phineas Redo, and one of the reasons that I did is because it's it's got to be one of our next read-alongs, right? I was thinking about that, and I was thinking uh, there are all sorts of candidates. For instance, for May, uh, or no. For April, <laughs> there are all sorts of candidates for April, uh, but surely this should be one of them. Otherwise, Phineas Finn, the book that it, this is Trollop, always thought of them as one book, and those that book was a while ago that we did that together as a read along. I don't want it to fade from your memories, so so, so I, I, I it's, it seemed fitting that it was one of the only Trollop mass markets that it was there. Uh, then this next one. There is no profligacy to this next one. There is no exorbitance. <laughs> this is a book that I plain and simple did not have. I've had many copies. I had the advanced copy. I had uh, the finished copy. I had a paperback. I had a UK paperback. And I cycled through all of those, giving them away to people who were looking for a book on this subject. So I saw this very nice trade paperback at the Brattle. I grabbed it. I don't know how long I'll have it. But this is The Storm of War by Andrew Roberts. This is his one volume narrative history of World War II. And the reason why I've cycled through so many volumes of it is because it is the natural answer to someone saying, I would like a one volume self-contained history of World War II that is readable. Because I'm not, I, I, you know, my, my history reading muscles are not in the best of shape. So I, I don't, I'm not faulting the book. I just, the book is going to have to do a lot of work to keep me interested. I understand that completely. I don't disdain it at all. Those muscles need to be in good shape in order to do something like this. And there is no more readable, no more ceaselessly interesting a writer of history living today than this author. And this book is a perfect example. So, so, so every time I got a copy, I give it away. Now I have a copy. I'm going to try and hold on to this one. <laughs> I'm going to try and hold on to this one. This will go on the shelf. I have, uh, in the other room, I have a bookcase that's a big, fat bookcase that's devoted to history, and there are shelves devoted to World War II. And in the shelves devoted to World War II, there's a section on one-volume histories of the war, like this. So I will, I will rearrange, you know, the books, the bookworm origami, I will rearrange, the feng shui of owning too many books, I will, I will rearrange the books on that bookcase in order to make room for one more. Probably it will mean getting rid of one, but that's okay, that's alright. Uh, and then this next one is another great, really readable, currently working, popular historian of the type that I really, really like. There's like a trio of them, and I think they're all fantastic, and they're all uh, the great the great subjects, you know, uh, Napoleon, uh, World War One, World War Two, and this is Max Hastings. 
uh, and it's this is catastrophe. 1914, Europe goes to war. And I had the reader's copy of this, the, the reviewer copy of this, I had the finished copy of this, I had a paperback copy of this, I have cycled again through all of it. Uh, because this is a fantastic account of the well-trod ground of the story of how Europe entered World War I. This is Max Hastings' version of it, and if you like him, him or Andrew Roberts or Anthony Beaver, these these great working historians who do really good work. I, If you like his style, then you're going to want this book. Uh, I've read an, an enormous number of books on the beginning of World War I on how it all came about. I think they're all, uh, there are lots of, lots of strong candidates. Margaret Macmillan wrote one. Uh, uh, Hugh Strachan wrote, uh, famously wrote a thousand page thing called Two Arms. That was supposed to be the first volume in a trilogy of which we've seen no other volumes. And I never see Two Arms anymore. Never. I would love it if I had a copy of that book. Because I noticed, of course, when I brought this here, when I brought this back to Hyde Cottage, my first question, because of how bad I have this sickness, my first question was, do I have a copy of this book? And I just forgot. So I looked at my history shelves. And I realized two things. One was good news. I don't have a copy of this. This is not a duplicate. And two, I don't have many books on World War I. I should have at least as many books on World War I as I have on World War II. Lord knows I've loved enough of them. I don't know what's going on there. I don't, I, I don't know what's going on there. I looked, at, I, yeah, just a little while ago, I, I reorganized that history bookshelf just for my own sake, just to get a sense of what was there and what wasn't. Uh, and for some reason, when I was reorganizing, I didn't realize how few World War I books there are. I appear I, not to have copies of The Guns of August or The Proud Tower by Barbara Tuckman. I don't have a copy of Two Arms by Hugh Strachan. I don't think I have any Margaret Macmillan. I, and a bunch of other stuff, too. Uh, in Flanders Field, a classic of World War I history writing, I don't have a copy of it. I'm going to have to take steps to correct that. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, but in the meantime, I have this. And, I, you know, Max Hastings, I, I have no compunction about saying that he's one of those uh, historians that I'll happily read and also own anything that he writes. Uh, so, and the, the visual aid for this one is what may be the best uh, one-volume treatment of how Europe went to World War One. I. I showed it on this channel the other day. I got it at Book Depository because... Uh, it was a UK edition. <laughs> and I have a sweet tooth for UK editions. This is Christopher Clark, The Sleepwalkers, in a big fat Penguin Trade paperback that I got from Book Depository. I reread it. I love it. He is, it is just so, so good. In all of these cases, uh, The Sleepwalkers, uh, Catastrophe, and also uh, The Storm of War. In all of these cases, the authors actually do have some overarching ideas. They're not just wikipedia style amassing facts they actually do have some ideas about uh, uh, you know larger observations to make and that's just fascinating especially andrew roberts i i don't always agree <laughs> with his with his larger organizi organizing thoughts about the subjects that he covers particularly napoleon although a close second of that would be his big book on churchill that just came out i don't always agree with them but i love them they are utterly fascinating uh so i don't consider it because of that ideological overview, that worldview that these things take place inside of, I don't consider this to be exorbitant <laughs> at all. Uh, these, this is two different trained and, obs and, and really talented historians going at the same thorny subject with their own kinds of emphasis, their own insights. I don't consider that... <laughs> that, that is not quite as bad as this. <laughs> or or this. <laughs> in two of these cases, I got I just plain up got doubles. So the the you know the the text itself is duplicated now in my collection. But considering how many copies I have of the House of the Seven Gables or Moby Dick, <laughs> I think I can probably stand to have two copies of these. So anyway, that was my that was my brattle trip. Can I do it? Uh, a Steve Pyramid. I got these two big uh, trade paperback histories. Of two books that I've read and love and would love to reread. Just fantastic. And both of them brand new. I mean, it's ridiculous. They don't seem like something you would get in a used bookstore that would have a thousand cracks on the spine. Uh, then I got Parade's End by Ford Maddox Ford. I could easily tempt myself to a reread of this book. It is really, really good. Uh, and also uh, Phineas Redux. The, the next Palliser novel in our horizon. <laughs> so, so there we go. That, that's another four book Brattle Hall. 
Uh, I think you should probably psychically prepare yourself for more brattle halls on this channel as the temperature warms up. I'm perfectly willing to admit that I'm no longer willing to go to the brattle and shop around outside on the carts when my giblets are freezing off. But as it gets warmer, <laughs> entirely possible. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, I'm going to wrap this up for now, uh, but we'll have, we have plenty of other bookish stuff to talk about, plenty. So I will see you soon. Thank you, BookTube.